Good morning. <clears throat> Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Happy Tuesday. Good morning, Michael. Hey, Belinda. Good morning. Well, Troy has sure done a great job with the sign. I, I really like those uh, slides with the pictures of the graduates on there. That's a real nice touch. Uh, good morning, Peggy, and good morning, Tim and Laquita. Uh, good morning, Miss Gail. Tim, I saw a coffee mug the other day. It made me think of you. Uh, we were at Tar Target, and there was a coffee mug. looked like it would hold about a gallon of coffee. <laughs> Uh, I, I almost bought it just for you, but uh, decided not to. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Miss Catherine. Uh, good morning, Tracy. Counting down to the hugs. Me too. Um, I think we're getting really close. I know uh, several churches in the area have started back this past Sunday uh, having services, and I believe it'll be very soon uh, that uh, we'll be able to do that as well. So, uh, so uh, keeping our fingers crossed and our prayers going. Good morning, Miss Patsy and, and Eva, uh, Mr. Bobby, Miss Reba. Good morning. Hey, Trent. Um, good to see you all this morning. I'm so thankful that you're joining in for these devotionals. Just so grateful. So many people are getting some good things out of these. Uh, let's open our Bibles to Hebrews 4. Verses 11 through 16 is where our scripture reading will be this morning. A very encouraging passage. Um, some have called this, uh, along with a few other places in the book of Hebrews, a salad passage because it has several lettuce phrases in it. Uh, let us do certain things. Good morning, Nicole. Now, I know that's a I know that's a preacher's joke, and nobody thinks it's funny except for preachers, but uh, we do enjoy it nonetheless. But our scripture reading and our devotional today is going to focus on these three let us phrases that comes from this passage. So I'll encourage you to be watching for them as we read through this text. Hebrews 4, 11 through 16 says, Let us therefore be diligent. To enter that rest, lest any one fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to, the, uh, to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There are three let us statements in this verse. Let us be diligent. Let us hold fast. And let us come boldly. Let's think about each one of these and what they're saying to us. In verse 11, he says, Let us be diligent, lest we uh, fall according to the same example of disobedience. Well, what example of disobedience is he talking about? Well, if you rewind back to chapter 3 and the early part of this chapter, the author makes a, a reference to the story from the Old Testament where uh, God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt, out of slavery, uh, and intended to bring them into the land that he had promised to Abraham. But the first generation of people that came out of Egypt, they came out of Egypt, they came through the Red Sea, but when they approached the, the, the promised land, they refused to go in and fight for it. They were too afraid. 
uh, of the walls and the giant soldiers and all of these things, and they failed to believe in God's ability to bring them safely into the promised land. And so uh, an entire generation wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until they passed away. And they never got to actually set foot inside the promised land. Now here, the writer writing to New Testament Christians uh, says, I don't want the same thing to happen to you. We've all been rescued out of Egypt. We've been, in other words, saved from our sins when we obeyed the gospel. We believed in Jesus, repented of our sins. We were baptized in the name of Christ and we were rescued. We were rescued from sin, the slavery and death of sin, just as they were rescued out of Egypt. And now we're making our journey toward the promised land. And the promised land for us is heaven. And that's the rest that he has promised us. And as we're making our journey through life, we don't want to fall short of the promised land. By failing to continue to believe in God and failing to continue to trust in him and and, and, uh, refusing to fight the battles that we have to fight to fight the good fight of faith. And, and, you know, for these people who first read this letter, the old life was was, uh, calling them back. And I think that happens to all of us at some point as Christians. We have this old life that we had to leave behind in order to follow follow Christ. But at some point in our lives, it's going to come calling us back. These Christians were facing persecution, persecution that they never had to endure before they became Christians. Now they're being tempted to go back to their old way of life. And the writer's telling them, don't do that. Let us be diligent. Lest we fall short of the rest that God has promised us. Diligent. The the meaning of that word diligent means to make haste and uh, also to give diligence. In other words, uh, when when you're diligent and there's something that needs to be done, you don't put it off. You do it right away. And when you do work at it, you give it everything you have. And that's what we're being told to do here as it pertains to living the Christian life. Show up early and stay late and give it everything that you have because God has promised you a rest and that rest is worth every single effort you make. Don't let that old life come calling you back. Resist that, that temptation to turn back to that old way of life and be diligent. The second let us phrase in this text is in verse 14. Let us hold fast our confession. We should do that because We have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, who has passed into the heavens. And what a great high priest we have. There is none greater. You see, our great high priest is the perfect priest. In the Old Testament, before a priest could offer a sacrifice for the people, he had to offer a sacrifice for himself because he had his own sin, not our high priest. He is sinless and perfect. He has never had to offer a sacrifice for himself. He has the perfect sacrifice. Under the Old Testament, all they could really offer was the blood of animals. But an animal is not really an adequate substitute for a man. The sacrifice that Jesus has made is himself. A man for a man. A perfect man for imperfect men. He has the perfect sacrifice. He has passed into the most holy place. In the Old Testament, the the temple had this special room called the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. And it represented the place of God's presence. But the priests were not allowed in there. Uh, The high priest would go in there once once a, a year on the Day of Atonement, and that's it. They weren't welcome there. The Even the high priest wasn't welcome there on a regular basis. But our high priest, 
has passed not into a little room in the temple in Jerusalem. Our high priest, once he died on the cross and was risen from the dead, he ascended back to heaven to sit at the right hand of God, the true most holy place. And as he has gone there, he can lead us there. Remember when he died on the cross, how the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, opening up the way to the most holy place? The the veil that had kept people out up to that point was now torn away so that now we all can have access to the presence of God. What What a wonderful, wonderful privilege we have. And his sacrifice brings permanent forgiveness. See, under the Old Testament, you had to come back year after year because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. But he made one sacrifice, and that one sacrifice brings permanent forgiveness so that once our sins are forgiven, they are forgotten, never to be remembered again. He truly is the great high priest, the greatest high priest. And because of that, we hold fast to the confession that we made that Jesus is Lord, the Son of God. Our confession is kind of like the vows that a a bride and bridegroom will make on their wedding day. Not just part of the ceremony, but these are promises they're making before God, lifelong promises. And our confession wasn't something that we simply said before we were baptized. It's something that we strive to hold on to day after day after day the rest of our lives. Hold on to your confession. You you confess that Jesus is Lord, now live every day accordingly. Hold on to that confession because you'll never find another high priest as qualified as he is. So, Let us be diligent and let us hold fast. And then finally, let us come boldly. If you, let's say you had the number to the governor's office today. You needed help with something, so you wanted to give him a call. Bill Lee, I need to talk to you about something I need some help with. What confidence do you really have that your your call would get through? that you would actually get some time with the governor today. Not much, is it? What if you had the president's number and you were going to call him up today? Donald, I need some help with something today. I I need to talk to you. What confidence do you have that uh, you, you would really get through? There's no way you could come boldly with that request. But you can go into a private place in your home Get down on your knees and close your eyes and bow your heads. And instantly, you would have direct communication with the throne room of God. And you could speak to the creator of the universe who is also your father in heaven. And he would listen to every word. And he would immediately get busy helping you with whatever need you have brought to him. We can come boldly to God's throne of grace. Because our high priest has walked where we walked. He can sympathize with our weaknesses because he's been tempted in all points just like we are. He never committed any sin and because of that, he knows how to solve the problems that we don't know how to solve. He knows how to give us the help that we need because he knows what we need. He knows what it takes to be faithful to the Father. And because of that, we today can come boldly with confidence to the throne of grace. And there we will find mercy that will hold back what we really deserve. And we will find grace to give us the things that we could never deserve. And that combination of mercy and grace will provide the help that we need today in our time of need. How exciting to know that right now in heaven, God is making the preparations for what you need for this day. He's providing it. You don't even know what you need, but he does. And he's already at work 
And so today you can come boldly to that throne of grace and know you're going to find the help that you need. What an encouraging passage. We've, uh, we've been rescued out of Egypt, but let's make sure that we don't fall short of the promised land. Let us be diligent. We know that we have a great high priest and there is none greater. So let us hold fast to our confession and live accordingly today. And he is there to help us to provide mercy and grace in our time of need. So let us come boldly to his throne and trust he will hear and he will respond. I hope this passage will be some encouragement to each of you today just to be reminded of the blessings and the privileges that we have as children of God. Let's bow together for a word of prayer. O oh Lord, our God, our Father in heaven, we come boldly before thy throne of grace today with boldness that not, that not based on, on the good that we have done because we know it is not enough. But we come boldly today based on your mercy and your grace. And we give thanks, Lord, for every good thing that you have provided. And we ask humbly, Lord, as you know what we will face this day, that you will provide for us, Father, the things that we need. It is a great comfort and encouragement to us, Lord, to know that you already know our needs and that you uh, are already providing for us. Who are we, Lord, that you should be so mindful of us and so helpful to us in our lives? Help us, Lord, to hold fast to the confession that we have made. We know that Jesus is Lord, and we long to live in such a way that he would be Lord over our lives today and every day. We long for that blessed promised land that you have uh, promised to us and that rest that is waiting for us there. We long to see our loved ones who are already there, and we long, Father, to see you face to face and to see Jesus our Lord to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit and all of the angels of heaven. And we don't want to fall short of that rest, Lord. So help us today to be diligent. Help us today to not put off the things that we need to do uh, to be right with you and be close to your side. Help us, Father, to give everything that we have to being that faithful child that you would have us to be. I pray for each one who has joined in for this devotional today, Lord. I know that you know their needs. I know that you know the challenges that they're facing. And I pray, Lord, that you will provide for them and bless them in ways that only you can. We continue our prayers, Lord, for those who are sick and struggling. We continue to pray for Miss Faye Robinson and pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless her recovery. We pray today for Jerry Reddick and hope that the treatments that he will that he is receiving will uh, improve his health to where he can receive this stem cell transplant, Lord. And we pray that you'll continue to bless these treatments that they will restore uh, uh, as much of a portion of health for him as possible. And just pray most of all for strength and encouragement to endure this uh, time that they're going through. We continue to pray for Blake Burke and his family and the passing of Miss Faye Perry. We continue to pray for Shelby Leatherwood, for Bev Estes, for Margaret Taylor, for Diane Cash, for Judy Blair and Nancy Stout, for Bobby and Nancy Macklin and Barbara Dees, for Betty Gailey, Montez Medlin, Margaret Medlin, and Buddy Hodge. We pray for all of those listed on our prayer list, Lord, and we know that you know their needs and we trust that you will provide. We continue to pray for those who live alone and, and recognize, Father, what a struggle this period of quarantine is, both physically and emotionally. Lord, we pray for comfort and we pray that you'll help us to find the areas where we can serve and be of help to each other. Lord, we pray for those who are out of work and those uh, business owners who are struggling. We pray that they'll be able now to get back to business. And we pray, Father, that you will help them to recover the losses that they've faced over the past few weeks. We continue to pray for 
what medical workers who are on the front, front lines of this problem. We pray for the church, Lord. We recognize the great opportunity of outreach that you provided for us through devotionals like this and through the live streaming of our services. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to make the most of these opportunities. We pray that precious people will be encouraged, Father, to put their trust in you and live for you. Lord, we need you today as we do every day. We pray that you'll be close by our side and help us, Father, in the ways that only you can. Please forgive us of our sins. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. We know, Father, that thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. And we pray that your will will be done today in our lives, just as it is in heaven. Please go with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, it's good to see that uh, Kay and, and Brenda and Donna were able to join us. And I know there are many others out there too. We're so thankful to have you join in today and hope you have a good day. Look forward to seeing you again on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Till then, we love you all. God bless.